In the United States, over the last decade, 60,000 pedestrians died under the wheels of an automobile. One million pedestrians were injured. Join us for the next half hour as we take a look at perils for pedestrians. On this episode, we travel to Portugal. We talk with an anthropologist in Lisbon about pedestrians and traffic conflicts. We talk with a city councillor in Aviro about walking. Finally, we look at the Active Access European project to encourage walking. Stay tuned. We're in Lisbon talking with Manuel Ramos, who's an associate professor of anthropology at Lisbon University Institute. What sort of research do you do that has to do with pedestrians? What I do is coordinate studies on risk uh, on road in on road environments, and um, so what we what we study is the conflicts between pedestrians and uh, car drivers, mainly in the urban areas in Portugal and also in Spain. What uh, what sort of things have you discovered in your research? Well, uh, what we've discovered is the, that uh, that the level of um, of conflict that uh, that goes on has created a defensive uh, behavior patterns in pedestrians, meaning that although the, the, the urban environments are very dangerous in Portugal and, and the, the, the speed in, inside the main cities is very high, the number of pedestrians killed is lower than we'd, uh, we'd expect to be because uh, with, uh, with, um, with familiarization, the pedestrians tend to create uh, a sort of defensive pattern, which is interesting. You you can notice it by either by in in isolation or uh, as uh, as groups as as in groups. So when when the the pedestrian acts uh, in a in isolate isolate form uh, or isolate way, what the pedestrian does is. Uh, although is breaking the rules, although it seems that his behavior is uh, a risky one, it's actually a very measured risk that he's taking because uh, as the, the, the street environment is very hostile to the pedestrian, meaning that the sidewalks are small, the, the zebra crossings are, are dangerous because pedestrians are killed um, either in, well, about, it's 40, 60%, 40% of, of pedestrians are killed on on, on zebra walkings and 60% uh, are killed outside. So what the, the pedestrian does is, because he knows that the, 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 the infrastructure is risky, because he knows that the driver is risky, he is willing to take risks, but in a very measured way. When he, when he acts uh, collectively, it's what, uh, what we found out, and it is, is, this is an interesting aspect, is that when the, when, when the, the, again, when the environment is dangerous, dangerous when the, the car drivers are, um, uh, being uh, aggressive, uh, the the pedestrians sort of create a, a crit wait for a critical mass and a leader to confront the car drivers to to be able to walk. And this uh, we've noticed in in um, in streets and in, uh, in squares, in plazas, and uh, this is uh, this has been very much part of uh, our interest, our present interest in in the study of pedestrian behavior. In, in this very dangerous um, environment. Do you see the same pattern uh, throughout the areas you've looked at in, in, in Portugal and in Spain? No, no, no. What, uh, what, what happens in Spain is not, not necessarily the opposite, but uh, in Spain the, infra the, the urban infrastructures are much more uh, pedestrian friendly. Uh, and so the, there's much more awareness uh, among the, the councils and among the politicians that uh, the pedestrian is, is a, an important factor in urban mobility. Um, also, they've had more money than the Portuguese to redo their infrastructure, urban infrastructure in the past 15, 10, 15 years. So what, what we notice in Spain is um, is a uh, what in a way we, you can also notice in the northern 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 Europe is uh, is a, a, a number of poli policies uh, that are very p protective of pedestrians, but that only applies to the city centres. In uh, in the peripheries, um, the the system doesn't work, and the pedestrians are uh, in a way treated the same way they are treated in, in, in Portuguese cities, 
but the difference is in Portuguese cities, be it in the inner city or in the outside or in the periphery, the, or the, in the suburban, suburban areas, the pedestrian is always uh, um, acted against. In Spain, there is a, a, a very, very significant difference between what's in the inner city and what's in the outer bounds of the city. And uh, widespread auto ownership, uh, car ownership. Uh, how, how long is, has that been common in, in, in Portugal and uh, how has that changed things? Well, with the entry of Portugal in the, in the European Union, uh, the, the landscape has changed very much. We had about 400,000 um, dr car drivers uh, in the in middle 80s for a population of 10 million, 9, 10 million. And in, uh, in 10 years, this, this number has uh, decuplicated, meaning that we now have more than 4 million and a half drivers. Uh, this has led to a very significant changes, meaning that um, the infrastructure had to change very rapidly and expand very rapidly. We had to, to teach, or more or less teach, uh, people to, to, to enter cars and use the cars in, in a very short uh, time span. And, um, and, uh, and the mentality hasn't, uh, wasn't able to, to follow these sudden changes. So. Uh, in, in, in pedestrian driver's behavior or relations, still the pedestrian is seen as a, a marginalized person, meaning that the, this person has no social status or economic status to afford a car. So this has, hasn't changed in the, even now it hasn't changed this mentality that you have a car, you are someone, or if you have a car uh, now that is black, and it's German, uh, then you're someone. If you're, if you're a, another sort of car, you're less someone. If you don't have a car, you really are no one. This, this still applies in the, in the, in, in the Portuguese uh, social tissue. What, uh, what, what's being done to try to change that attitude that, that pedestrians are, are, are just people that can't afford cars? I think that not very much has been done. I mean, we, we, there's all these European directives, uh, governments, because they, the governments are, they know they, they have to compare with other countries, European countries, where the pedestrians are treated significantly, significantly better. Uh, they sort of uh, acknowledge that pedestrians uh, are a part of the system. The, the, the technical part, that is the engineers, are also very reticent, uh, reticent uh, to, to, to think about mobility, pedestrian mobility in Portugal. Uh, we, can, we can name a few exceptions, but uh, the general, the general um, attitude of, uh, of the technical people is the pedestrians are a, an obstacle to the progression of the car. And so I don't think much has been done, actually. I mean, there, there is a, there is a, a very... Um, obvious uh, worry by the authorities uh, that, uh, that the number of pedestrians uh, killed in Portuguese roads and streets is too high and uh, puts, uh, puts us in a very bad picture in comparison to other European countries. So there are policies being uh, sort of implemented but uh, our, our notion of uh, implementation is uh, something to be uh, well on the paper and not uh, uh, and not to, to create a real change. So we haven't, we haven't actually seen uh, in main cities a, a, very, uh, a very different pattern. In middle-sized in middle, middle -sized cities, the, the picture is quite different. Be it in, in the north or in the south, there are councils who have managed actually to, to, to create a, a, um, a, an environment, a, a street environment, at least in the center. That, uh, that is much more um, uh, pedestrian friendly, but in the overall, in the overall, um, uh, the overall attitude, and especially by the, the national government, is uh, that the pedestrian is, uh, is still a low, a low key figure, a, a, a social mar marginalized figure. And you're also president of a group, ACAM. Mm -hmm. What do those initials stand for? What's the organization? Well, it is a pun. In Portuguese it works, in, maybe in, in English it doesn't work so well. It means self-mobilized, but self-mobilized means also automobilized. So uh, we are an association who thinks that uh, by 
putting people think, to think or making people think about the car, the, the automobile, automobile environment, they can, um, they can self-mobilize themselves to, to act, uh, to, to change the paradigm of, uh, of mobility. So this is our perspective. We're, we're not, we don't concentrate necessarily only on pedestrians, but since pedestrians are the, the fragile, the most fragile uh, element in the, in the mobility system, um, our, our perspective is that we, 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 we need to, to defend the pedestrian, we need to, to dignify the, the pedestrian's uh, position in the social system. Uh, we have created a, a, le um, a charter for pedestrian rights, which is quite radical. It has been accepted by the Lisbon Council, but uh, as, a, as a piece of paper, it hasn't uh, given much results in, uh, in reality. What, uh, what, what sort of things does ACAM do to uh, you know, try to bring attention to the issues or, or mm. to, to you know, get closer to your goals? Mm. Well, every association or every organization is, uh, is in a way dependent on the, on, the, on the personality of the people who are uh, in, it, in them. Uh, and our association is, uh, has a, a very strong rhetoric. We, we, we uh, from the start, we've opposed, uh, we, we're, we've been very vocal against uh, this sort of uh, uh, mediocre uh, view that, that makes politicians and governments uh, not give attention to the real problems on the, on the roads and streets because uh, changing the, the the system might uh, might make you might lose them votes. So we've been we've been very vocal against the government. We've been very vocal against the parliament, and uh, this has uh, has put us in a in a in a position of being independent. Very you know we have a very independent voice. No subsidies, and uh, and uh, when when we, when we meet ministers or. Uh, uh, heads of uh, of uh, any department, they they feel quite uneasy uh, by our presence. But we we thought this is uh, this is one word, one way to go. We working in the system is one way. Working against the system is another way. Uh, since the since the system is so um, so hypnotized, so uh, unsensitized. We thought that we, we need to be uh, to have a, a very strong rhetoric uh, to say we, we what what we're facing is a civil war on the on the roads and streets. What uh, we're facing is a is a system system that's not sustainable. We need to change, and the politicians need to act, and they, they need to be uh, to 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 get out of their uh, um, their uh, sort of. Um, lazy position and tend really to the citizens needs because sometimes the citizens don't know that they have those needs and this is I think quite visible in the uh, when when we relate to pedestrians pedestrians don't push for their rights now normally they uh, uh, well a pedestrian we are all pedestrians but people uh, don't think of themselves as pedestrians they think of themselves as someone Who's, uh, who walks because he cannot uh, drive a car or cannot use the, the public transport because anyway the public transport uh, generally is not so good. So uh, we tend to give voice to the pedestrians and uh, in a very, as I said, in a very, very vocal way. And you were co-editor of a book along with Mario Alves. Uh, what was the book? How did that get project get going? Well, that book's uh, it's an interesting project. It was it's called the Walker in the City. Uh, we had a, an international meeting. We uh, we hosted a meeting, an international meeting uh, of European uh, specialists on on pedestrian quality needs, mostly European. Um, and uh, the 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 book is itself the product of uh, of that meeting. Uh, so it, it has a, a number of uh, of participations by by uh, by European specialists. It is uh, it is a roadmap to to a certain extent of what can change, and uh, and uh, and uh, and it uh, also in, it presents a number of case studies in Portugal and Spain uh, of uh, what's what's being done and what's not being done uh, on 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 Portuguese and Spanish uh, streets. We're in front of the Aviro City Hall, talking with Mia Nolasco. 
What's your position with the city? Well, um, as a councillor for culture and for social work uh, in the city, um, I'm involved with the community, of course, and be, with the, um, well, the desires of the people uh, looking for the culture in the local ways and, uh, okay, the way they move, the way they live. I'm uh, very, very in touch with uh, a lot of questions and uh, this is my duty. Now we're in terms. right next to the city hall is the, the theater. What would be the connection between the theater and walking? <laughs> okay, because uh, I'm linked with the, the direction of the, the theater in terms of uh, programmation, cultural programmation, arts and uh, performance, etc. The walk distance uh, that we can um, um, construct between the artists, the movement, the involvement the, uh, of the community is very, very important uh, to think uh, um, how we can move, how we can manage the scale of the city in relation to the pedestrian. And um, it's, very, it's very nice if you can um, tell to the people, come to the theatre, is quickly away, you can go comfortably, uh, comfortably to the, I don't know, no. comfortably, yes. <laughs> comfortably uh, to the, to the theatre by walk. If you can go uh, with friends and you have a meeting there and you have no problems to put your car in anywhere. So it's much more nicer to tell the people that it's comfortable to go um, in the city, uh, not only for the theatre, but uh, for other places when you can have um, a spectral, uh, uh, an event, a cultural event, by walk without um, any problems uh, because the cars are sometimes are not uh, so comfortable in the middle of the city. In this moment I think is a secure way to go. I think uh, the city of Aveiro has a scale for to go by walk. It's a small place, uh, uh, very okay, with a level very yeah. continued, very planned, and um, I think it's much more um, cultural uh, harmony. It gives you a way to to go, to think, um, to make some introspection, and to go to anywhere without be so busy with the car. Is it, is it easy to convince people that walking to the theater or other destinations downtown is, is the best way to go? Well, not um, in the night. The problem is uh, the timing of the, um, the events, the cultural events. They, they happen or holidays or Sundays, uh, afternoon, etc. In the morning, the promenades, uh, concerts, and you go by walk. It's nice. To the night is more difficult. Not only because of the security, uh, because you go through the city, you go to other areas and sometimes you have no lightning enough, you have some obstacles that can um, be not so friendly when you go. If you go together with a group, it's um, easier, but if you go alone, sometimes it's uh, uncomfortable. Um, but it's not a problem because uh, in reality, Aveiro is not uh, strong, uh, it's not a capital city, so it's, um, it's a median city. So you have this scale to go um, to every every place by walk, to the theater, to the, um, the library, to the park. You can go by walk, um, I think, in a, um, a very comfortable way, but uh, at night maybe it's not so nice. So I think we should think about this. We should give more... Um, to, to think the roots, to give some um, uh, more uh, lightning or some place where the people can have a telephone if you if you need a SOS or or to give some or to have more um, policemen um, since the 11 o'clock to two or three o'clock in the morning because I think there are the worst timing that uh, everything can happen of course. Um, but if it was not because of the security, I think it will be fantastic to go by walk and the people likes. We have a traditional uh, tradition in Portugal to go by bicycle and by walk. A lot of people move for the Merca, for, for to make shoppings or to go to the praça or to go to, to the neighborhood by walk. Um, the car comes uh, um, only 
to go for a long distance. Nowadays we are more um, enfin, lazy, so uh, we like to, to go for everyone, for everywhere uh, by car. But I think that the, these new generations, they appreciate a lot to go um, by walk, uh, to go in group. And for me, for myself, I think that Yes, it's a particular way to be more cultural, more in, more in touch with the, the, the city. You, you can only discover places and uh, small details in the, in place, in, the, in the city or in the atmosphere where you live. If you go by walk, you have time, you make some reflection, you can stop where you, where you want, you can have a coffee, you can talk, you can do a lot of things. A kind of socialization as well is much more, I don't know, sympathetic, is more deeply life, I think. What is it like uh, walking in the city for, for the elderly, for old people? Okay, um, for a long, long time to go um, to um, win each other and to be in touch with the other, to make this kind of socialization in the city, it was something very, very close to the, to the people. For the oldest in this, in this moment, if they want to maintain this tradition, I think, um, I think it's a good, a good way to, um, to recuperate and to, um, to have this sense of uh, belief in the city, to maintain this kind of, um, of costumes, to go by walk, to go to speak with the, the pharmacy people, to the bakery, to make the, the shoppings. And um, I think Aveiro can offer these kind of, uh, of opportunities to go uh, by walk for everywhere for the oldest people because we are very, I mean, we have, we have a, a very nice pavements. Uh, they are nice in terms aesthetic terms. They are well designed, and I think um, they are um, comfortable to go. In some parts, the oldest have a problem if um, if the weather is not so nice, and uh, because we have in Portugal this kind of traditional pavements with stones, black and white, and they are calcarian with basalt. Sometimes they are very polished and um, they can be not secure. So we should think about this, okay, to make some, um, well, some adaptations. Um, we need to think about the persons with some problems for mobility, think about possibilities uh, to moving, uh, because we have a lot of obstacles. And in nowadays, I think Aveiro have the conditions to put all the things in an um, appropriate manner in order to go by with a with a share uh, uh, with a, um, a wheel a wheelchair, wheelchair and uh, with the babies and with these uh, cars uh, and to make some promenades we think we need to we need to tra to, to make some work in this in this field because um, if you want to be more um, positive in this kind of being touched, we need to prepare the cities for, um, for the older, for the children and for everyone, of course. We're in the Viro, Portugal, talking with Jose Quintao. What is Active Access? Active Access is a European project um, uh, to encourage uh, walking as a, um, a way to save energy and uh, develop the uh, local economy. Uh, here in Aveiro, uh, it's the only Portuguese city on the project, and uh, um, how, uh, how did you intend to do that? Uh, first, um, well, for uh, uh, a new perception about walking here in Aveiro. Um, and how to do that? Uh, well, first, to, to people who live in the town, in the, in the our area, area work area, um, we are trying to explain them that uh, in a radio of 200 meters, 300 meters, they have all things they can need in their needs. Uh, so, and uh, the, 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 uh, to the visitors, 
telling how they can park the car and doing the rest of the trip, walking and enjoying our uh, public space as a, a way of interaction, uh, of urbanity. Uh, that's why uh, we want to develop this. Now, how, many, how many other cities in Europe are involved and, and, and how do you, the different cities interact? Well, uh, uh, there are 15 uh, uh, corporations, towns, I suppose cities, I suppose it was 11. And uh, uh, we have uh, uh, some meetings. Um, um, we have twice a week, uh, year a meeting. Uh, we just had one in uh, Holland, in Den Haag, uh, last uh, the beginning of the month. And uh, um, uh, but we also um, we also have a platform, a, a website platform, where uh, we do exchange uh, experimentals, and uh, we are going to have a program of shadowing. Uh, it means uh, we are visiting other city uh, uh, to see how they uh, took care of this project, and we receive another city uh, to explain and to to show them uh, how um, we are working here. That's it. No. So, uh, how, how long has uh, Active Ask has been going on and, and how much longer is it scheduled to last? Yeah, uh, we are um, uh, in half the time. Uh, it's a project for three years and uh, we have the first year it was to prepare things. The, this year it's to the next year uh, uh, 12 11 uh, 2011 uh, it was for put our projects uh, in the in the in space and uh, uh, objective uh, uh, action yes <laughs> the uh, action it and uh, and the, the last 6 months uh, well till july uh, to 2012 uh, well, the last six months it's to evaluate and uh, and uh, exchange experience and do some work about uh, uh, good uh, um, good practices, best practices yes. for uh, uh, well uh, develop these kind of projects. Visit us on the internet at www.pedestrians.org.